Hello and welcome back, dear friends. It's me, Odo. We are back at the at our Pathfinder Wrath of the Waters campaign. Um, last time we just killed two armies. Now we are going to enter the inconspicuous camp. Let's enter and let's look what there is. If we find something great. Or at least inconspicuous. Well, Krinuk looks like a, a kobold. Oh, I would really love to get a kobold in the group. Elven notes, yay! Mm, first of all, we have to change this. You go here, no, you go here, you go here, pick you middle, and you go there. Let's talk to this guy. Krinuk, the aged kobold sitting by the small campfire, greets you with an amicable gesture. He doesn't reach for his weapon or his threateningly. All in all, his behavior is highly unusual for one of his kind. No, kobolds are nice. I really like kobolds. His clothes look quite unusual too. Not many kobolds opt for human clothing, nor do they adorn their possessions with spikes or scales. Greetings, my name is Krenuk. I'm all alone here, so you may safely come closer. Smoothly, without the usual kobold hissing. Moving slightly aside, the kobold points to the carcass of a small animal on a stick roasting over the fire. Dinner will be ready soon. <clears throat> Whoa, I've never met a talking lizard before. Well, back in the river city, we had a real dragon. Are you a dragon too? Can you turn big? You flatter me, young lady. Many of my fellows would give up everything to become dragons. Some even entertain themselves with fantasies of already being such. But I'm proud to be what I am, a kobold. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, I like Krinok. Probably we can take Krinok with us. Kobolds are rather cautious lot. No, we can't take Krinuk with us. Kobolds are no playing characters. Kobolds are rather cautious lot, it would seem. I never expected to receive an invitation to dinner from one of your kind. As a guest rather than a dish, that is. <laughs> I didn't exactly invite you, Count. My invitation was addressed to the commander. But sit down, help yourself. Beyond the walls of your fancy mansions, you'll find surprises far more unusual than my humble self. Okay, who are you? Let's be plain straight. <laughs> As I've already mentioned, my name is Krinok, at your service. The kobold offers a short bow, an unusual gesture for one of his kind to make. As a rule, kobolds do not express their respects to anyone other than dragons. I'm a traveler and a friend of the, to the crusade. I can be your friend, too, if you're tolerant toward kobolds. Yes, we are. <laughs> Krinuk utters the word tolerant with shocking ease, as if he is something other than the narrow-minded and savage subterranean beast you expect him to be. Kobolds are infamous for worshipping dragons and despising all other races, and Two of them would even understand the concept of tolerance, let alone subscribe to it. Wait, what did you just say, tolerant? Are you sure you're a kobold? Ha! <laughs> so you saw through my disguise! Krinok tried to mislead you with sweet words and then ambush you. 
cobalt atus, atus latis, which then morphs into an amused chuckle. Of course, I'm cobalt. That's me. You are not the first to be shocked after hearing me speak and realizing that I'm not going to rob or kill you. I'm lucky if representatives of other races want to be seen as intellectuals or decent conversationalists. They have to read a lot of books find their manners, possess a passing knowledge of classical theatre, and douse themselves in fine perfume. Whereas in my case, all I have to do is not lunge at you with a spare or hiss every other word. <laughs> Nor at the bonfire. What are you cooking? Judging by its ears and hind legs, it's a hare. The couple casts a dubious glance at the animal's mouth, which boasts a set of huge teeth. Or maybe it's a tiger? Depends on your point of view, I suppose. What do you want from me? I'd better continue. I'm not interested in continuing. Yeah. What do you want from me? I want nothing from you. I'm asking for nothing. I'm simply offering help. I sympathize with your cause, so I would like to provide whatever support I can from time to time. Does that work for you? The kobold stops and looks at you expectantly. How exactly can you help me? With advice, mostly. Throughout my life, I've seen a lot. And a piece of timely advice can be extremely valuable, don't you agree? Of course. If your advisor is a kobold, the merits are not so obvious, but you're in luck. This kobold right here has extensive knowledge of a variety of matters you may find useful someday. From 40 knots toward the campfire, one more thing I have to offer is this hare after it's cooked. How do you know so much about demons? He didn't say anything about demons, did he? Uh, Krinok gives you a long and heavy look. I've had some experience with them. I don't want to go into the details right now. All I'm saying is that after a rather short, and not even hostile, encounter with them, I stopped eating meat for several years. <laughs> What's the catch? No catch. I'm acting for wholly altruistic reasons. But my motives are something... I would rather not reveal. Krenuk turns his face to you and his wrinkles become more visible in the glow of the fire. Just met five minutes ago. Don't you think it's too early to expect complete candor just yet? As I have already told you, I am a friend of the Crusade. You can choose to trust me or you can leave. Hmm, we could attack him. Thank you. We would appreciate any help. Yeah, well, of course we would appreciate help. Especially from kobolds. Then we have a deal. You won't regret, regret your decision. You ju just drop by my camp every now and then so we can have a word. Perhaps I'll be able to give you some useful tips. Pulling out a small knife, the traveler carefully cuts off two strips of meat from the roasted hair. He throws one into his toothy maw while graciously offering the other to you. A strange animal for sure, but it seems edible. The energies of the world wound mask everything in illusion. Harmless looking animals try to eat you for dinner. Dangerous paths appear to be straight roads and your enemies, sometimes your enemies can look like your friends. Krinuk squints and looks deeply into your eyes. Have you ever been in a situation like this? First you think a person is your friend and ally, but then the scales fall from your eyes and you realize they are actually your sworn enemy. So you catch this person, you tie them up and then you start thinking, how should you treat them now? Like your enemy? Like your former friend? Hard to decide. What would you do if one of your friends turned out to be a traitor? Okay, we have to do the chaotic thing. 
because last time we took the lawful thing. Are you talking about someone specific? Hmm. Those who have lost their way must be saved. We need to help them return to the path of righteousness. That's the good thing. Every traitor must be executed. There's no other way. No. Hmm. Celtic, I tried to find out what would force the traitor to reveal the truth about their real master. Master Standu, whatever that is. I will torture the traitor for days and make them beg for mercy. <laughs> okay, the chaotic thing is good right right here. I think that's that's really a good answer. I probably would have taken that anyway. What if you have to threaten them with the death of their family? Or what if you have to grant mercy to someone truly despicable? You don't have to answer. I can tell your eyes that you're willing to do whatever it takes. And that is correct. If you catch a villain, don't rush to put the noose around their neck. First learn everything they have to tell you. As for principles and morality, you better stuff them in your deepest pocket and don't bandy them about without good reason. I liked your answer. You obviously think with your head and don't just parrot the instructions of others. Ah, was good. We did a good thing there. It was good. <laughs> then again, if we're discussing traitors, it's fortunate that betrayal is not reserved for mortals alone. Demons stab each other in the back far more frequently. The rumor is that there are at least two demon stashes within Dresden, filled with arms and supplies that were stolen by the Skarites from Baphomites and vice versa. One of them is near the entrance to the fortress, while another one lies by the entrance of the, to the citadel. Ah, cool. He knows stuff about Dresden. Where did you learn that? Gossip, hearsay, the world is an ocean of chatter and I'm quite a skilled fisherman. Well, that is valuable information. I'm highly suspicious that you know so much about these things. Of course it is. I wouldn't waste your time. Hmm. Cracking his knuckles, Krinok gives you an inquisitive look. I hope that when the time comes for you to make real decisions instead of hypothetical ones, your wisdom won't fail you. Just one bad choice can turn a revered, weird leader into a disgraced pariah. Interesting. Uh, I've seen it happen before. I lived through something like that. My tribe suffered a disaster caused by just one bad choice. Can you even imagine? The kobold squints sadly, his shoulders slumping a bit. With a sigh, he begins to talk. I don't like telling this story, but it might be useful for you to know. Know it. Perhaps it will serve as a warning. Okay. Just tell me. Krimok clears his throat and starts talking in a sonorous voice that reveals his experience as a bard. I was born into the mighty and proud tribe of the Night Ruby. Our caves were vast, our mine shafts were rich in the quartz and metals, and our underground lakes were brimming with fish, and of course, we had plenty of slaves. The Night Ruby was a model of kobold success. It was a tight-knit, greedy and aggressive tribe that intimidated even a few of the nearby human settlements. But there was a flaw underlying our power. Once long ago, a leader of our tribe signed a pact with devils, promised them the soul of every tribe member in exchange for help and prosperity. Since then, every new All Watcher had to agree to the pact. As the power of the tribe grew, as did the number of lost souls. It was like that until our leader Urmark came to power. 
she was a principled and proud elder who didn't want to bend the knee to hell. So, refu so she refused to sign the pact, and all kinds of calamities befell our tribe. The tribe was attacked by its neighbors at the devil's in instigation. Pandemics broke out, and then, then our slaves rebelled. They came after their former masters in the dead of night. Our clutches of eggs were ravaged, our altars were desecrated, and our warriors were slain in their burrows. The slaves paid us in full for our cruelty and arrogance. They hunted us, chasing us down through the caves and mine shafts, level by level. When we were finally left alone, we had no idea where we were. All we saw around us was darkness, and lurking in the darkness was bloodthirsty and Not a nice story. After raising his voice dramatically, Krinuk suddenly stops. Then he adds with a teasing smile, I think this moment is enough of a cliffhanger to stop here. <laughs> I'd like to know more about you. I have a question about demons. You mentioned you know a lot about them. I'd like to hear the story of your travels. Have you heard about my unusual powers? No, we don't have suspicions about him. Let's know more about him. I'm flattered. But what's so special about me? I've never accomplished any feat on the battlefield. I don't know any special craft, and I don't even belong to an exotic species. I don't have the slightest idea what you find so interesting about me. What do you do? I'm a traveling bard. But I can already foresee your next question. How does a bard, who also happens to be a kobold, man manage to earn a living? All the civilized races of Avista know that when you encounter a kobold, the best course of action is to smash its skull trample it with a horse, then burn the remains just in case. Yeah, that's right. Well, the prejudice that uh, um, civilized peoples have regarding my kind is quite understandable. Our infamy as robbers and murderers is more than deserved. So just imagine the spectacle in any tavern when an articulate kobold in decent clothes shows up Offering to share a story or two for a few coins and a mug of ale. I assure you, no matter how big of a deal you are here, if we drop by any tavern in Andoran, all eyes will be on me. I'm an exotic oddity. Why <laughs> did you decide to come here to World Wounds? I just don't like it when the residents of the Lower Plains get involved in the lives of mortals. I firmly believe that we don't need any advisors to help us handle our own affairs. And we need overlords even less. Okay, so the story must go on like they manage to survive without help, probably. You're different from other worlds. So you will uh, post about his exploits. Krinok grins mischief. My life has given me many opportunities to communicate with beings from other races, so I found a common language with them. Hmm. Yeah, well, do we need this to know? He told us already. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, let's ask about demons then. What is the demon's main weakness? It's a fact that they are hostages to their own nature. And by their nature, demons are just a bunch of mad apes, a group of ordinary chaos. You don't need to make a bunch of apes angry. You just give one of them a banana and arm the other with a stick. They'll kill each other without your direct intervention. <laughs> Interesting. As a weakness. How do you know so much about demons? 
I have had some experience with them. I don't want to go into the details right now. All I'm saying is that after a rather short and not even hostile encounter... Yeah, okay, he told us that before. Do you know anything about wounds inflicted by demons that first appear and disappear and later reappear again? Do I need to resort to platitudes such as the weirdest tricks expected from demons, or can I just skip that part? I've never heard anything like you're describing, but new sorts of nasty stuff appears in the world wound every day. However, if we think about it some more, don't you think that this wound doesn't cause enough trouble to be something the demons did to you on purpose? When you are hit by the magic of the abyss, you know instantly that death is coming your way, and fast. Okay. Is it? I'd like to hear the story of your travels. Hmm. Tell me about your tribe. Yeah, we, we heard this before. This was the story of his tribe. And he doesn't want to... Have you heard any about my unusual powers? Hmm. I've heard you're either extremely lucky or quite the opposite. You survived the massacre in Canabras just to spearhead a new suicide mission. <laughs> On the other hand, you survived then. And most likely you will survive now. Good luck in this noble endeavor. Okay, I have to go. Good luck, I believe you'll need it. That's it, nothing more. Can we find Krinuk in the camp? Is there something else that we can plunder? We could attack Krinuk probably. No, no way to get there. <laughs> no. Nothing interesting. Okay, let's move on. We can't get there. We have to first get rid of this demon camp. Okay, then let's move into the camp. If by chance raise your animal companion's intelligence score of 3 or they won't have access to hmm. Don't know how intelligent my pig is, but normally a pig is really intelligent. <sighs> okay. Come pig. Show me what we have. Let's sell stuff.
Okay. What do we have to do next? I don't know. Wand of Sephirius. Oh, time's up anyway. What's that? Helmet of Scrutia. I think we have to find some of the bloodstained letter. Did we read this one? It has a letter on one side of the paper and on the other a hastily drawn map of the dungeons with a mark on a spot. To anyone who can help us. Ah, yeah, we will. We read this. We can sell this as well. It doesn't give us any money. And stop. Yep. Yep, uh, deal. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a lot of stuff right now. Um, just look here through. What do we need? Secrets of creation. Scale shed some light on the fate of the prisoner, blah blah blah. To learn the full story, find something else that once belonged to Terendalev. We've got this, but we need the storyteller, and he's not around right now. We'll have to wait for him. Uh, we did this. What's that? According to the Chronicles, one of the Crusades, Radix, was lost in the land of the Commander's army. It's about to pass through. The power of this artifact would be useful in the march on Dresden. Perhaps it would be wise to spend some time carefully exploring the right, right bank of the West Seven. Okay, what, what should we do with this stuff? Recruit archers? Recruit general? Did we find the relic? No, probably not. Then of course this is about, uh, Perhaps the art of strategy and soldiers under his command have secured the first set of his means. Hmm, okay, no, we did this already. Um, we did most of the, of the quest. Okay. Let's see if we can find this guy. Where was he? Was he at the chapel? No, he wasn't at the chapel. He was in the hospital, I think. There is stuff here. We could take this. Could we take this? Will this make the gods don't not like us? This place has been sanctified. It can protect the area around the abyss. Hmm. Whatever.
I think this guy was here. There was this elf. For an autumn, yeah, there he is. Who was looking for? I found Kinesa spying on my camp. Then you should be on the lookout for her accomplices, her demonic masters. Must have sent her to plot against you. And since she's already made her way into the camp, she will strike soon. Okay. I hope you weren't um, uh, as merciful her, with her this time. I let her go. She's not a threat to the Crusaders. Then she has deceived you once more. Okay. Well, we told him <laughs> um, that she was there. That was that. Mm, but it didn't didn't do anything about this. Yeah, this we are not able to do anymore. Interesting. Um, yeah, I will stop here for today. I don't know really what to do next. <laughs> um, just I, I think I have to clear the, the way with my army. Um, that's more or less what we have to do. But this we will do on the next time. Until then, see you. Bye.